Good afternoon, everybody. Christine Barconi here in the NBC 4i Streaming Center with our digital journalist, Cynthia Rossi. First time joining us right now, we want to talk about a new series, Cynthia. Um, call, you're calling it When Kids Get Shot. I want to know um, why did you write this? I know it's going to be a long series and you've been working very hard on this. Yes, Christine, I've been working for a couple of weeks now researching with a lot of different folks here in Columbus, Ohio. I came up with the idea for this series when I was listening to the scanners both in 2019 and 2020, and I was hearing a huge difference in 2020 between the number of transports of children and also seeing those reports of children getting shot. And I just really made me wonder what is really going on with our children here in Columbus. We were very focused on COVID-19 and coronavirus, which has taken thousands of lives. And that, and rightly so, but it seemed like these children were being transported in record numbers, and I knew that that was hurting our neighborhoods. Absolutely, and you're really um, focusing on um, the topic of toxic neighborhoods. Can you explain a little bit more about that? Well, the, it's not quite toxic neighborhoods. It's toxic stress in neighborhoods, which is different. Topic of to Okay, I understand. Yes, yes thank yes. you. And um, it's not the neighborhoods themselves. It's, it's something that I, I started to see when I started mapping where these kids were being shot. And I started seeing that it was the same neighborhoods year on year. And that was interesting to me. It was scary and, and sad as well because it was happening over and over again in the same places now we know that whenever we lose a family member it's a terrible tragedy mm -hmm. so and to lose a child triple the tragedy so in these neighborhoods they were losing children and it was happening over and over again year on year so um it was really made me wonder what is the emotional, psychic, physical effect on a neighborhood when children are shot there, when people are getting shot there year on year. And I started talking to people. I, start, I, I talked to a pediatric trauma surgeon um, who is in the series. And he started mentioning toxic, neighbor, toxic stress in neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. and. This kind of put a word to what I thought was going on. And so it was something that I started to explore a little bit more. Um, I talked to somebody from um, Columbus Public Health in the care team, and she talked about toxic stress building up in neighborhoods and what that meant. I talked to uh, the trauma surgeon. He was talking about toxic stress in neighborhoods. And so it was, and I was reading his link. I was reading what he was sending me in terms of his, of the research that had been done. And I found out that this is actually a concept of that um, sociologist study of how can we reduce the toxic stress in load on neighborhoods. That's really interesting. You said you, you talked to, um, the doctor, but I also, um, in this story that we have linked right now, the first one in this series, um, you, you talked to a, a, I believe it was a reverend as well. A bishop. A bishop, bishop thank Jerry you. Jerry Pierce at Miracle Cathedral. And I talked to him because he's right down there uh, where a lot of this is, is going on. And I know that he is caring for this community, that he is working hard. I could see that from some of the articles that have been done on him in the, in the past. And so I reached out to him and said, could you talk to us? And, and he was um, very open and very willing to speak. And he spoke intuitively about this toxic stress load on neighborhoods and how this trauma is creates this ripple effect that makes people afraid to do business in their neighborhood, to come out and walk to the shops that makes them afraid, to come out of their homes that makes them, you know. And then that kind of trauma leads to um, an addiction. Uh, later on in the series, I talk with the coroner about the link between trauma and drug overdose, mm -hmm. particularly if somebody sees trauma when they're a child. So they see a child, a sibling, a neighbor, be shot, it increases their um, chances of addiction. So the series really goes on to explore all of the different ways that um, a child being shot uh, impacts us in our in our daily lives if we live in one of these neighborhoods. What was also striking to me, Cynthia, I feel like that happening just once in your life 
would be extraordinarily traumatic. But some of these kids, by the time they're getting to their teens, they're having multiple funerals, multiple friends that are going through this. Uh, what did the doctor have to say about that? Uh, the doctor talked about the post-traumatic stress syndrome that we're seeing in our children now. Um, the Reverend, um, sorry, Bishop Pierce talked about that as well. Um, the coroner brought it up. She said that when a child sees um, another child shot, it's like a soldier in Afghanistan on the battlefield, yeah. that PTSD is that strong. And then you see somebody shot, uh, as Bishop Pierce said, not just once, but twice. And they cry at the first funeral. They cry a little bit less at the second funeral. On the third funeral, they have a T-shirt. And he said, that's just, that's just how it's going. And I feel um, that these children are, are being traumatized in a way that, that nobody is seeing as a public health crisis, no, at least nobody that I've talked to yet. Certainly. Um, so you said you observed the, the runs to children's and the children being shot. You anecdotally heard this, but we got the numbers today and it confirmed exactly what you said. Can you talk about that? Yes. Um, I got the numbers from Columbus Public Health from ODH. And in 2019, there were four children who died of gunshot wounds in, in Columbus, Ohio. In 2020, there were tw 20 that's five times. Five times four is 20. I, I mean, I just do the math over and over. And it just renders me speechless. It, it, I'm, I, it's, it's a crazy number. And I just, I cannot imagine what it's like to be a child right now in some of these neighborhoods. They must just be so scared or so numb or so traumatized and so full of PTSD. I just, I can't imagine. Absolutely, and it's not only the mental health repercussions, you touch on the physical health repercussions as well. Um, yeah. It's twofold. Yes, that's something that Dr. Groner talked about. Um, he talked about how there are studies that show that these kids have an increase in asthma um, and even an increase in cancer later on in life. So it's well documented that when you see this kind of trauma, you go through this kind of trauma, there are physical repercussions. Um, for those who have survived, they have to then heal from a gunshot wound, which can be terribly traumatic. Um, how are they going to go back to that school? How are they going to operate in that neighborhood? Some families move away, he said. Uh, it's, it's just terrible for the family, for the children, it, it rips people up. And I think we all know how impressionable young minds really are. Yes. Um, and really hold on to, to, to memories like that. And it shows itself, as you have been saying, um, as toxic stress. Uh, Cynthia, so you're doing multiple parts to this series. Um, uh, seven or eight, I believe you said. Yes. And uh, what's ahead? So this this part is about toxic stress, but what can we look forward to in the uh, days to come? We're going to release them day by day, correct? Yes, we, we can look. Well, I felt like it was very important to talk to Dr. Groner again. I spoke to him the first time he was talking about the post-traumatic stress implications of, a, of gunshot wounds um, of a child being shot on a family. I felt it was important to go back to him and ask exactly what happens in a child's body when a child is shot. Because I think that we tend to, you know, think in conceptual terms, just because this is such a difficult subject. It's easy to conceptualize and then once we've conceptualized, put that on the shelf and not deal with that anymore. And I, I felt like it was really important that we knew what was going on in a child's body when this happens to them. Then I also talked to a gun shop owner. I thought that was a very important interview because he was um, giving a different perspective. He tells you how to lock up your gun for under 10 bucks. So a lot of these uh, children that are shot are, are um, guns in the home that are not properly locked up. And he tells us that it's very cheap and easy to do this. Um, we also, uh, I talked to the coroner and get her perspective. Unfortunately, she's the one who has to see these bodies as they come through. And um, it has been a, a very ta taxing year for the coroner. Um, and then 
I also look at some of the solutions that have been proposed in Columbus. Now, I personally think it's a little bit too soon to jump to the solutions phase because I think we really have to get to grips and that that people don't understand the numbers of the record numbers of children being shot last year in 2020. It's still just astounding that number going from four in 2019 to 20 this year. It's just and that's in the city of Columbus alone. That's not in Ohio stat. That is here in Columbus, in in our city. Uh, these are our kids. These are our kids. And, you know, when I was talking to Bishop Pierce, he was saying, um, these are my children. You know, he says they're not my children, but they're my children. He said they're my bone. It was really moving. So we have um, the full interviews with the bishop as well as the doctor up on NBC4i.com. If you're watching um, on NBC4i.com, you can scroll down and check those out. And if you're joining us on Facebook, we really appreciate all of um, the comments and the viewers that we have with us right now. Um, really good discussion going on here in the comments and um, i will hope you guys stay with us for the days to come the link to cynthia's story the first one in this series is in the description of this video uh cynthia thank you so much for joining us i think it's just so important that we um, talk about this and i commend you for having your ears open to a real problem in this city Thank you, Christine. And I, I really hope that the people who look at the series watch the videos and they watch them all the way through. Um, I tend, what I did with this series is I stepped back and I just shot what these people were saying. I wanted them to have the platform. I wanted them to have your full attention. And so it's really important to listen to what Bishop Pierce has to say, to listen to what Dr. Groner has to say, to listen what Marion uh, Stuckey of, of care, the care team has to say. Um, without listening to them, we can't get this full picture. Without a full picture, we're just going to say, oh, that's a number, and put it on the shelf. I, I very much want people to come to this with an open heart and, and see, what, see what it does. Absolutely. Thank you, Cynthia. Again, um, NBC4i.com, we've got it pinned to our homepage, and be on the lookout for several stories to come this week as well. Bye.